Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Machifi up here again. Now we're going to do a chapter is nine summary in Cisco Nataan. So let's go. And first of all, chapter nine Cisco Nataan is com it is composed of transport layer, transport layer data and Ethernet support the human network. By supplying reliable com communication between people on a single device. People can use multiple applications and services such as, as email, the web, and instant messaging to send message or retrieve information data. And instant messaging that send message or retrieve information Data from each of these applications is packaged, transported, and delivered to appropriate application or destination device. The sample process described on an OSI layer accept data from the application layer and prepare it for addressing at the network layer, a source of computer communication with a receiving computer to decide how to break up data into segments. How to make sure none of the segment get lost and how to verify all the segment arrive. When thinking about the transport layer, think of shipping department preparing single order or multiple packages of delivery. So guys, that is the intro about chapter 9. So next we will, now we will list proceed to the summary of it. Summary of chapter 9 will be and first we're going to say the content of all chapter 9. First is that introduction, subnetting an IPv4 network, addressing schemes, design a consideration for IPv6 and it so the objective for chapter 9 is Explain why routing is necessary for hosts on different networks to communicate. Describe IP communication protocol used to identify a single device on a network. Given a network and a subnet must calculate the number of host address available. Calculate the necessary subnet mass in order to accommodate the requirements of the network. And it is described Benefits of variable length, subnet masking, VLSM. Explain how IPv6 address assignment are implemented in a business network. So in subnetting, it is a process that of a network into multiple smaller network spaces called subnet networks or subnet. There are large network control traffic and reduce overall network traffic and improved network performance. Communication between subnet. A router is necessary for devices of network and subnet to communicate. Each router interface must have an IPv4 host and device and some, it, some of it is devices on a network subnet use the router interface attached to a their LAN as their default gateway. So uh, their LAN, basic subnetting, Subnet in news, subnet in formulas that were said in chapter 8. Creating 8 subnets, creating subnets that are subnetting based on house requirements. Two considerations when planning subnets. Number one is number of subnets required and number two is number of host address required. So the next is formula to determine the number of usable hosts is 2 raised to n minus 2. 2 raised to n where the n is the number of remaining host bit is used to calculate the number of hosts. And negative 2 the subnet network ID and broadcast address cannot be used on the each subnet. So calculate subnet and network based requirements calculate the number of subnet in 2 raised to n where n is the number of its barrel and subnet needed for, for each department. So subnetting to meet network requirements balance is required number of subnets and host for subnet largest sub subnet and it is designed addressing scheme 
to accommodate the maximum number of hosts for each subnet, allow for growth in the each subnet. So traditional subnetting with addresses. Traditional subnetting uses the same number of addresses allocated for each number. And subnet that require fewer address have unused wasted addresses. For example, one links only need two addresses. We, we are saying that VLSM, but what is a VLSM? VLSM is a variable length subnet mass. The variable length subnet mass is VLSM. Subnetting a subnet provides more efficient use of addresses. VLSM allows network space to divide in unequal parts. Subnet mass carries or depending on how many bits have been borrowed for a particular subnet. Network is first subnet and the subnets are the subnetted. VSL, VLSM in practice. Using VLSM subnets, the LAN and WAN segments in available below can be addressed with the minimum width. Each LAN can be designed a subnet with 27 masks. Each one link will be subnet with 30 masks. So guys, uh, there is the planning to address the network. One is preventing duplication of address. Two is providing and control access. And three is monitoring security performance. Next is subnetting using the subnet ID. Subnet allocation, subnet interface ID, and now we're going to the, the it, it all consists of transport layer provide transport related services by dividing data received from application into segments, adding a header to identify and manage each segment, and using the header information to resemble the segments back into application data. Passing the assembled data to correct application. UDP and TCP are common transport layer protocols. UDP datagrams and TCP segments have headers added in the front of the data. Include a source of port number and destination port number. This ports number enable data to be directed to a correct application running on the destination computer. TCP does not pass any data to a network until it knows that the this destination is ready to receive it. TCP then manages the flow of data and resends any data segments that are acknowledged as being received at the destination TCP uses mechanisms of handshaking timers, acknowledgement, message, and dynamic windowing to achieve reliability. The reliability process, however, it imposes overhead on the network in terms of much larger segment, headers, and more network traffic between source and destination. Guys, uh, so you can see, if, if the application data needs to be delivered across network quickly, or if network bandwidth cannot support the overhead of control message being exchanged between the source and destination system UDP would be developer preferred transport layer protocol UDP provides none of the TCP reliability features however this does not necessarily mean the communication itself is unreliable there may be mechanism in the application layer protocols and services that process loss or delay the data grants if the application has these requirements. The application developer decides the transport layer protocols the best meets the requirements for the application. It is important to remember that the other layers all play in the part data in the communication and movements performances. So, guys, in chapter 9, the transport layer is all about the dynamic and how it is divide the data er, and, and or adding a header to identify a marriage segment and using the header information to resemble the segments back into application data.
and PASI, the symbol data to correct application. So guys, that is all about chapter 9. Hope you learned something and hope you gather, gather something from this video and hope you make it to the top and gather and be a Cisco engineer someday. And that is all and thank you for watching this vlog and again I am Maggie Behavior, student of BSIT 2105. Thank you.